What is happening team? Now over the years I've owned a wide selection of lenses ranging from wide angle prime lenses through to super zooms. But there was always one focal length that I always went cheap on because I could and it was the 50 millimeter prime lens. Now most camera companies offer their cheapest prime lens in the form of the 50 millimeter because well it's the cheapest to manufacture with simpler glass elements. Anything under 40 millimeters and the lens would have to include an element to help to correct for field curvature of the image plus at least two more elements at the rear of the lens and elements in the middle to correct for aberrations like chromatic, spherical and astigmatism. The 50mm prime lens or the nifty 50 as it's otherwise known was always a great handy lens at about £160 to buy, really sharp through its middle range of about f8 and I would always use this lens for studio portraits when my 85mm couldn't achieve the field of view I required for more full length shots. The problem with the nifty 50 is the chromatic aberration and the softness shooting wide open at f1.8 plus 1.8 1.8 doesn't give you quite enough beautiful bokeh or enough separation that you get from the high-end 50mm like the 1.2. So while I was wondering what to spend my store credit on at Wex Photo Video and what new piece of kit would enhance the quality of my photography, because no matter what anybody tells you, gear does matter, especially when it comes to lenses. My 50mm absolutely needed an upgrade, but with the Sony G Master coming in at a whopping £2,100, I mean who can afford that? I thought there must be an alternative, there must be a lens out there that doesn't send me into an unarranged overdraft, a lens with super sharp images throughout its entire aperture range that doesn't suffer lens aberrations and a lens with a low f-stop with beautiful bokeh that doesn't break the bank. Well guess what? there was. Meet the Sigma 50mm 1.4 art lens. Okay now this is not a new lens, in fact it's been around for quite a number of years but it's new to me and it's probably new to a lot of you thinking about upgrading your nifty 50 lenses and this has quickly become my favourite lens and quite possibly the best lens I've ever owned. What? Even better than the Canon 70-200mm 2.8? Hmm, well, okay, this is a superior lens, no question. But on the Sony a7 IV body with an MC11 adapter, this lens is compromised in its autofocus reliability, often hunting for focus and not able to utilize the entire focus area on the alpha cameras. And the sheer size of this lens with the adapter attached makes it pretty cumbersome. So I have to demote this from the top spot. The 50mm Sigma art lens also marginally beats my 24mm art lens which is an absolutely phenomenal lens with similar image quality to the 50 throughout its entire aperture range. Now why the 50mm is now top of my list of lenses is mainly because of the focal length. If I could only take one lens with me on a shoot or to a desert island it would be this lens. 50mm is the everyday lens, an absolute sweet spot focal length. It's the lens equivalent to the field of view of the human eye. You've heard the term the photographer's eye. Well you see a scene, you analyze and compose your shot in 50 millimeters because that's what your eye sees. Now I wouldn't exactly call this the Swiss army knife of lenses like your 24 to 70 millimeter zoom lens. It requires a little more effort from the photographer like moving back and forth with your actual feet. But I would choose this over the 24 to 70 millimeter every day of the week purely for its image quality quality and its very low f-stop, making this a choice lens for shooting weddings where dark ambient light in churches will want to push your ISO to uncomfortable levels. With f1.4 you're guaranteed less noisier images and beautiful blurry foregrounds and backgrounds. This also now becomes my go-to workhorse lens for studio portraiture work and production photography in theatres and cabaret. So how is shooting at f1.4 and is the image as sharp as f8 or f11? Let's find out in Scotland.
Well, good evening, everyone. A glorious little scene here in Glencoe. I have my new 50mm lens on the Sony a7 IV and an ND filter on the lens just to slow the shutter down to 0.6 of a second to get that slightly dreamier quality on that flowing river. F13, just to see how sharp this lens really is. In the end, I went for a horizontal composition, but essentially everything was the same with the settings. If we zoom in on the corners, we can see the image is beautifully clean at F13, and the center on the house razor sharp. Shooting wide open at f1.4, this unedited image is ridiculously sharp in the middle of the frame, with only slight amounts of green fringing on the sheep's coat. Very impressive for f1.4. Really lovely scene here, high on top of this cliff face, shooting wide open again at f1.4 to blur these rocks in the foreground, creating real depth. Even though it was a very bright scene, chromatic aberration is minimal, even zoomed in all the way on the distant lighthouse. On the way down, I couldn't resist getting the 70 to 200 mm out for that compressed landscape shot of the sheer cliff face. So I just wanted to show you how good these Sigma art lenses really are. This is my 24 mm I have a circular polarizer which helps to cut through the glare on the water. I'm going for a focus stack and exposure blend. Just two images to make sure I absolutely nail focus on these rocks in the water. Just going to bring the exposure up by about half a second. resist taking a picture of a Highland coup. Back in a mode here. I feel pretty confident shooting at f1.4 on this lens now. Just need this big guy to turn and face me. So I've never had this problem in headshot sessions. Come on, dude. Finally he did, and the level of detail in the hair is just phenomenal. So as you've guessed it, I'm back in London town to test this lens out in the city. I don't think it's the ideal lens for street photography as it's too big, heavy, and not very discreet, but we'll give it a go. I do miss the islands though. Big Ben looking all spectacular. I mean, I should think so after five years being covered up and an 80 million pound makeover. F1.4. 
This lens at f1.4 is so sharp in the middle and does a pretty decent job in the corners too. Because of the high dynamic range of the image, some chromatic aberration is visible which you would expect from most lenses at f1.4 on the outer edges because of refraction, but very impressive towards the middle of the frame with virtually no fringing. So I'm going to see how this lens performs at f16, its narrowest aperture. I have an ND filter just to drag the shutter to around 3 seconds and then it's simply a case of waiting for some buses to come by and capture some of that gorgeous motion blur. F16 performs really well. In the corners, the crane is sharp. Good color rendition. And of course, pin sharp on the clock face. Right, so I'm just doing a quick bokeh experiment on the 50 millimeter lens. I've got some twinkle lights in the background. I'm at the minimum focusing distance for this lens, which is about 40 centimeters, focusing on the subject matter, which is my old Olympus 35 millimeter. I'm shooting wide open at f1.4. Let's see if we can create some beautiful blurry bokehs. At f1.4 the bokeh is lovely, ever so slightly oval shaped towards the edges, but stopping down to f1.6 the bokeh is obviously not as big, but rounded off nicely. So build quality on this lens is second to none. As with all the art lens range, you can expect the highest quality materials. Uh, weather sealed with the rubber gasket for those dusty and wet days. Uh, manual focus switch on the side. And I have to say quick autofocus with this hypersonic motor. Quiet too. As good as the Sony native lenses and a solid focusing ring. The only thing it doesn't have like the Sony G Master is the customizable button on the side, but I don't really use this anyway. This lens is heavy, which you would expect from a high quality lens with 13 elements of glass. My only question to you is why on earth you would spend an additional 1450 pounds for the Sony G Master over the Sigma, which comes in at 650 pounds. It is easily the best lens in this price range with outstanding results. I cannot champion the Sigma art lenses enough. So that's your lot folks, sorry I've been away for so long, I've had a record breaking number of photo shoots this month and that trip to Scotland. Um, if you're new to this channel, welcome, hit that subscribe button for more of me, cameras and generally mucking about. Oh and do me a favour and click that like button to give this video a little boost along. I'll see you next time.